Hi there, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Last time, in an example program with trees, where each node has kids as well as parent pointer where possible, we saw ways of causing and detecting memory errors in dynamic and static ways in C++, Zig, and Rust. And in Safe Rust, the way we did it last time, this prevented us from doing parent pointers. And we'll stick to Safe Rust today as well. Remember also that Rust doesn't guarantee against panics, but it does often statically check against potential memory violations. But in any case, what happens if we do want these parent pointers? But to do that, let's go back to C++ and make a difference in how we're handling our kids and our parents. Earlier, we just had a vector of expanded node structure values and pointers to parents. Now we're going to have shared pointers, or in other words, reference counted. And the reason we're gonna do this is so that we can have automatically managed parent pointers. I could have just made these raw pointers, but that's riskier, and I wanna be a little bit safer here. So I have a weak pointer through which we can access a parent, but it won't hold it in memory unless a shared pointer is also holding onto it as well. And in any case, this gives us independently allocated nodes and automatically managed memory. Doesn't guarantee us memory safety, we can still do crazy things, but it does make certain things easier. So for example, down here in process, where it does take a lot more fanfare to make our shared pointer instances, we do have the ability now to grab a reference to something inside of the tree, add something to the vector of kids, and still use that previous pointer when we're done. Because these nodes are now independently living pointers on the heap. Our intro coming in is being assigned into the tree, no copy of it being made. This also is a pointer to the same thing. Now, if we want to go crazy, we could make, you know, pointers to pointers and get us in the same situation as before, but we're not going to do that. And most of the time, there's not a lot of motivation to do so. Anyway, let's run this. And here we see our intro being printed out, our outro as well, and a slightly higher total than last time because we have one more node in our tree. And down here in main, I hang on to this tree that's returned as a shared pointer. And then I access the parent, which is the tree, through my previous intro I'd created. So that didn't work at all in our previous version. Worth pointing out, I could have returned the tree by value out of here, which is somewhat similar to moves in Rust, which I also skipped there. Anyway, back here to our shared pointers. This tree hangs onto the parent, and our weak pointer we can lock to get out that root. But what happens if we don't hang onto the parent? Because remember, it was a weak pointer inside of our node. Let's run this and see what happens. Ooh, segmentation fault. That's because no one's hanging on to the parent, which means it gets freed and lock returns what's effectively a null pointer. We could be more explicit about checking it if we want to. But meanwhile, go back to where we were before. Let's try a sanitizer. Only typed correctly, I hope. Just to prove we didn't have any memory access violations. Okay. So this is the new world we're living in now. And we'll take a quick look at Zig, where I didn't do things quite the same way. I could have gone to the effort to manually increment and decrement some kind of reference counting, but instead I just made an array list of node pointers with the still optional parent pointer. And while I'm doing things manually here, it does allow me to do things like add a new kid and still reference a previous pointer because the pointers are now living independently in memory instead of in a bulk array. Let's take a look at Rust. And in this version of the program, just like in C++, I chose to use reference counting with weak pointers to parents. And if we notice here, there's no lifetimes on the struct, like we're required before once we had parent pointers. That's because all the lifetimes are managed internally within the reference counting, just like they are in strings. They might have dynamically allocated memory, but we're not managing it, they are. In a sense, we can pretend our lifetimes live forever and let someone else take care of it at runtime. And just like in C++, building these things is now more effort, so I made a helper function to make it a bit easier. And down here is where we're building our tree, getting that internal pointer, adding a new thing onto the end, and proving we can still access our previous reference. Let's run it. And works as expected. And worth pointing out that unlike in C++, in Rust we do manually call a clone in order to increment our reference count when we're getting a new reference to it. We don't manually decrement. That happens from drop when the lifetime of the local RC instance ends. Meanwhile, down here in main, or the same thing we could do in C++, is if we return an RC or reference counted instance, we can hang on to it and then use it, again, with a fair amount of fanfare, and where upgrade is like lock in C++. 
and unwrap gives us a chance to panic. Again, other functions are available if we want to, to be more deliberate about checking if it's there or not. But just to prove what happens if we get rid of this and run again, we see our panic here. So having had some fun in these systemsy type languages, let's go to a language that's perhaps a little bit less so, which is C-sharp. And like many languages that have become popular since the 90s, C-sharp has outright garbage collection, including the ability to handle reference cycles and clean those up. But just to be more like the C++ and Rust, I made the parent pointer a weak reference. In this case, it's not to prevent memory leaks, but just because maybe sometimes you might want to have the behavior that you want to allow something to go away if no one else is looking at it. And down here where we build our tree, there's less fanfare than in either C++ or Rust. And we pass in by reference here, get a reference back again, can add things to that list all we want, and still use our independently living objects afterward. Let's run this. And we see the behavior we expect. Where here our try get target is like the lock or upgrade from what we saw before. And where I also did not hang on to any kind of return parent. But luckily enough, root was still around afterward anyway. Because in many of these garbage collected languages, when the GC runs and what it does in any particular run is sort of non-deterministic. What happens if we force a GC run? Might that happen to collect our root? Let's find out. In this case, it definitely did. We had a null reference exception because our root stayed null when we tried to get the target. And it even warns us of the possibility of that. Anyway, so what we see in C-sharp here as a GC language, which has a lot in common with many other similar languages, is that your objects live independently by default, and they effectively live forever, again, infinity lifetimes. What the garbage collection is giving to us isn't necessarily a guarantee of no memory leaks. What it's giving to us is A, convenience, but B, also memory safety. If some object gets released at some point when no one's looking at it, did it ever really die? From the language semantics perspective, it sort of lives forever. Anyway, let's get rid of this iffy weak reference stuff and our main so we can use a different version here instead, where we go back to using a node as a struct, which is an expanded value type. So this is sort of like that expanded list we had originally in our C++. And note that we don't have parent pointers here sort of like was hard for us in our original version of Rust. And there's a good reason for that, and it's actually somewhat related. But let's enable the main here. There's probably some way to tell .NET which main I want to run, but I failed to figure it out. So I've just been commenting and uncommenting mains from different files. Let's run this. Prove that it's working, including our addition of a new outro. Though we do find print of intro worked here, and that's because intro got a copy of that node. There's no way for me actually to say, give me a pointer to it. That doesn't exist in standard C-sharp, except there's a way around that. In somewhat recent versions of C-sharp, they've added this idea of spans so that we can use stack allocated arrays for efficiency reasons. And mostly, this is actually safe to use and gives us even the ability to abstract over whether we're using stack allocated or dynamically allocated arrays. And this works in part because arrays in C-sharp, once you make them, they don't change their allocation. But there's also this sneaky thing called collections marshal that tries to make certain kinds of uses more efficient at the cost of being unsafe. Because lists in C-sharp allow reallocation of the array underneath them, just like the vectors in C++ or Rust. Let's use that. So here we have a span of nodes, and then we're modifying our list like we're not supposed to, and using a reference into that span after the fact. Let's see what happens. Well, it looks like it worked. I have two intros here now, one for my reference into the span and one for my copy, but that may have just been luck on our part. I don't know internally exactly what's happening when I say add here. Let's do something a bit more extreme and clear out the contents of the list. Now when I run it, I get a null reference exception inside of my printing, meaning that it doesn't realize we're outside the bounds of the new list. And Maybe the internal array has changed, maybe it hasn't, but that should have been an index out of bounds exception. Instead, I'm accessing somewhere in memory that's now a null pointer. And personally, I'd like to see the requirement in C-sharp to use the unsafe keyword to mark off the use of this facility. And maybe they'll get to that at some point in the future, I don't know. Meanwhile, let's make that go back away and look at one more thing, my missing parent pointer. Well, that's because when something's a struct, there's no way to have a pointer to it at all. I can put it there, and what does the compiler say? 
Ooh, struct member causes a cycle in the struct. If you think about it, if a struct contains another expanded struct, then it's infinitely sized because that one would also have a struct inside of it and so on and so forth. So you can't do this. And the same problem would happen if you tried to do an expanded struct value inside of a struct in any of these other languages. So let's make that go away and try a different kind of cheat here where we're gonna box a struct up inside of a class. C Sharp technically lets me do this, but we're not gonna find a lot of value in it because while this is a pointer to somewhere on the heap that has a node value in it, it's still a node value. It can't be a pointer to somewhere inside of the kids of a different node. Because again, this is a value type in here. So this inherent dichotomy of class and struct in C Sharp is a way to give you values while still maintaining memory safety, but with different kinds of caveats. Anyway, I hope to look at other languages in the future because this is not all the ways to look at memory safety. And I hope this has been fun. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.